as we begin our study of Christian apologetics, many people ask me, Dr. Philip, why is apologetics so important for Christians? We don't see a similar branch in Hindu theology, Tao, Tao theology or Shinto theology. You are right. Hindus don't have a branch of theology known as apologetics. There is no Hindu apologetics. They just present their faith and move on. Why? There is a difference between the Hindu faith and the Christian faith. In fact, all the faiths in this world can be divided into two kinds of faith. One, history-based faiths and two, philosophy-based faiths. The Jewish faith, the Christian faith and the Islamic faith are history-based faiths. Whereas Hinduism, Taoism, Buddhism and all these Eastern religions, they are philosophy based. Which means that though they have a historical component, that historical component is not essential for the truthfulness of their claims. Their claims depend upon their philosophies. And since their claims depend upon their philosophies and not upon any kind of history or historical component, a branch of theology like apologetics is not essential for them. Whereas for the Jewish faith, for the Christian faith and also for the Islamic faith, the historical component is important. However, there is a difference between the Islamic faith and the Christian faith. For a follower of Islam, salvation is work based. Salvation depends upon his works, which means for him, the concept of salvation is not linked to the history given in Quran. And therefore, the Muslim doesn't have to worry about the historical truth of the history found in his holy books. They might be right, they might be wrong. Of course, all of them believe that it is right. But his salvation does not depend upon or the offer of salvation from God for him does not depend upon the rightness or wrongness of the history that he finds in his holy books. It's different for, for the Jewish and the Christian faith. For the Jew, salvation depends upon his fulfillment of the law and if he has to fulfill the law, he should know the law and the law has come through a historical person and a historical process. Remove the lawgiver, Moses, or remove the historical process where the scripture tells how the law came to mankind. You remove it and you are destroying the foundation of the Jewish faith. Much more than the Jewish faith, the Christian faith is totally linked to history. History and theology in the Christian faith are completely intertwined with each other. You destroy history, theology is gone. You destroy theology and history makes no meaning for, I mean history that is found in the Bible makes no meaning. It looks random, it looks arbitrary. So for a Christian, the historical component of the Bible and the theology in which he believes they are completely interlinked with each other and you cannot destroy one and keep the other. If you destroy one, the other is automatically destroyed. A lot of non-Christians and particularly rationalists understand this fact very well. And since they understand the historical nature of the Christian faith, they have tried to bring hundreds or even thousands of arguments against the historicity of the Bible the reliability of the history mentioned in the Bible, the existence of events mentioned in the Bible or the occurrence of events mentioned in the Bible and even the historicity of Lord Jesus Christ because they know you destroy the foundation, you destroy the historical foundation and you destroy theology. You may ask, what do you mean? What do you mean by theology depending upon history? Okay, let me explain. We know that the core of the Christian faith is that salvation is by grace through faith. God offers salvation to mankind through the sacrificial work of Christ. You will agree. But 
now the question is why it became necessary for christ to sacrifice you will say man is a sinner how do you know man is a sinner you have to go to old testament history you have to go to the edenic sin that means the moment you present the gospel man gets salvation by grace through faith you start with eden god created eden and placed mankind there man there adam and eve there the moment we talk about eden we have to go to genesis the book of genesis the moment we go to the book of genesis we have to look at creation we have to look at uh, garden of eden we come across the history of how god said you should not eat the fruit of this tree of good and knowledge and how they ate the forbidden fruit you may say well that's all perhaps some kind of myth if adam and eve are myth then sin and fall is a myth and if sin and fall is a myth then there, there is no need there was no need for christ to come to this world because if man is not a sinner and if he is not a sinner by birth he does not need a savior he can save himself he can save himself through his works in fact he does not need salvation at all because he is not fallen and since he is not fallen why does he need salvation so let me make it very clear you need the historical component of bible and the christian faith for the faith itself to be true god had to create this universe the doctrine of creation has to be right the doctrine or the history that god created the garden of eden god created a garden known as eden that has to be right the fact that god created adam and eve as the first couple from whom we are all born that has to be right because if there was no adam if there was no eve there was no sin and if there was no sin we are not sinners please remember everything that the bible says is linked with each other theology is linked with history okay so adam and eve they had to be historical people sin and fall it had to be historical if these two things are false then man is not sinful there is no need for savior you may say well what if adam and eve is the name of a race well if that's the name of a race then the big question is did the whole race fall into sin and if they fell into sin why no you may say well some of the people sinned and then the question is some of them sinned and if the rest of them did not sin then humanity is made up of a stream of people where some are sinners and some are not you are messing up the whole theology non christians particularly rationalists know these things they know that take away a component a historical component of the christian faith and the christian faith is destroyed now let's go back to the old testament adam and eve abraham isaac jacob moses the law and promise in the law for salvation by grace through faith promise to abraham that the messiah shall come from his family all these prophecies about messiah they all had to be accurate they all had to be given for us to claim that jesus christ is the world savior you may say well uh, let's assume that none of that is real let's only let's assume that only lord jesus is real everything else mentioned before that is myth uh, mythology fine let's assume that and let let's look at what happens to the whole christian faith if everything mentioned in the old testament old testament is myth or false now the question is why did jesus come to the world you will say jesus came to this world to be our savior but the question is if everything in the old testament is false or a myth 
then man is not a sinner and if man is not a sinner then why did Lord Jesus have to come to this world? Christian apologetics is so important because the historical component of the Christian faith is important. Rationalists know this and therefore rationalists question this, rationalists try to attack this and once they attack ideas have consequences and some of these ideas will definitely fall into the ears of our people. Their articles shall be read by our people and many of them would want to know the truth. Also there would be many people who have heard all these things and when we present the gospel of salvation to them, they would want their doubts to be clarified. They may say, okay, I accept that Lord Jesus came to this world to save sinners, but then I have a few doubts about the Old Testament. I have a few doubts about the claims made about Lord Jesus Christ, the claims made by Lord Jesus Christ. Would you be able to help me with my doubts? Again, you need Christian apologetics to help that person. I also want to remind you that a lot of people know that if Jesus was not real, then the entire Christian faith collapses. You may say, well, how does it collapse? Because uh, we could be good people, we could do this, we could that. Exactly. If our life and if our salvation depends only upon good works, then everything, 100% of what the New Testament claims is false. Christian faith is a faith that thoroughly depends upon history and historical accuracy, what the Old Testament says and what the New Testament says. You may say, Dr. Philip, suppose if the whole of the Old Testament is false, can't we accept the New Testament as historical? The answer is no. Everything in New Testament assumes that the Old Testament is right, that the Old Testament history is right. And everything depends, everything in New Testament is a consequence of what we read in the Old Testament, such as creation, fall, promise of a Messiah, preservation of a pure line through which Messiah could be born as the progeny of Abraham. So you can't have it that way, you can't say, you can't claim that let's write off Old Testament and we will accept just the New Testament, no. Again, let me remind you, Bible is a history-based faith where either every piece has to be joined together or there is no story. Remove Old Testament, New Testament is removed. Remove New Testament, Old Testament becomes meaningless. That is what I meant right in the beginning when I said that Christianity is a history-based faith Though Christians often don't realize it, non-Christians and rationalists recognize this, they realize it, this and that's the reason why rationalists always try to attack the historical foundation of the Christian faith. One of the biggest attacks in the 19th and 20th century has been against the historical existence of Lord Jesus Christ. I have a number of books in my collection which claim that Jesus was a myth. There was no person like Lord Jesus. You may say, how can they doubt it? Let's uh, be very clear about two things. One, a rationalist, an atheist is a person who starts with the presumption, starts with the presupposition that Christian faith is false. And since he starts with the presupposition that Christian faith is false, he would deny everything in the Bible. He would deny the Old Testament, he would deny the New Testament. And as part of denying the New Testament, he has to deny the historicity of Lord Jesus Christ. So when you say, how can they deny? You need to understand that they deny the historicity of Lord Jesus by virtue of their presuppositions. You may say, uh, well, Okay, let them deny it by virtue of their presuppositions. But don't we have historical proofs? That's where Christian apologetics again comes to our help. 
there are a number of books that deny the historicity of Lord Jesus Christ and they have brought a number of arguments which look very convincing. To a superficial reader, they look very convincing. For example, they come and say, listen, no contemporary of Lord Jesus has ever spoken about him. Any person who has not studied history of the first century is likely to believe. See, if you don't know something, if you don't know about something, then you are likely to believe any false statement that people make about that thing, about which you don't know anything. A number of books which speak about the historicity of Lord Jesus are based upon that premise that you, the reader, doesn't know anything about first century evidences about Lord Jesus Christ and they build their case upon your ignorance or they build their argument upon your ignorance. You may ask, well, are there evidences? Do we have evidence about Lord Jesus Christ outside the Bible? And my answer is yes, there are plenty of evidences or there is plenty of evidence outside the Bible. Again, Rationalists know that we are going to produce all these evidences and therefore they have tried to attack all these evidences. We would come to them as we study the historicity of Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, suffice to say that there is plenty of evidence outside the Bible that Lord Jesus did exist, that he was a historical person. Let me also remind you, they attack the historicity of Lord Jesus because if Lord Jesus were not a historical person then Christianity can be proved to be false. You may ask how? It's very simple. If Lord Jesus was not a historical person then your claim in John 3.16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in, Lord, in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If he was not historical, then whosoever believes in him becomes meaningless. How can you believe in a person who was not real? And how can you have salvation through a person, faith in a person who was not real? As I said, they, those who attack the Christian faith, recognize these things very clearly and that's why they attack the historicity of Lord Jesus. For us Christians, it's important because of many other reasons. For example, if Jesus Christ was not a historical person, then the book of Acts is not historical. See, in Acts, we see the Holy Spirit coming 10 days after the ascension of Lord Jesus. Now, if there was no Jesus, there was no ascension. And if there was no ascension, then everything that we find in Acts, that we read in Acts is false because everything in Acts is based upon the historicity of Lord Jesus Christ. And then if the four Gospels can be written off, you can write off Acts very easily. If you write off Acts, then there was no Paul. If there was no Paul or if Paul was a mythological figure or an imaginary figure, then all the epistles are imaginary works or imaginative works done by others, not by Paul. And if they are imaginative works, then naturally there is no truth in the epistles. Let's be very clear. In olden times, we used to have winter clothes which were hand-knitted. And these hand-knitted clothes had a problem. If one thread comes out, children had the habit of pulling that thread for fun. And within a few minutes, there will be no warm cloth left. You only have completely intermingled thread, which is of no use to anyone. So mothers were very careful whenever they would see a thread coming out of these winter hand knitted winter clothes, they would quickly ask the children to remove the cloth and they would quickly stitch it back safely so that it doesn't 
destroy the winter cloth. In the same way, you remove one stone from Old Testament, the history of the Old Testament or the history of New Testament and like that winter cloth, the rationalists can keep on pulling and ultimately no winter cloth is left, no Christianity is left. Creation, Eden, Adam and Eve, temptation, fall, all these things had to be true. If the Christian claim is true that man is a sinner. If those things did not happen, then man is not a sinner. Abraham had to be true, Isaac had to be true, and the Old Testament had to be true if law given in the Old Testament is true and real. The law had to be true to talk about grace, salvation by grace through faith, which would come through Messiah. Lord Jesus had to be a historical person to offer salvation. And let me remind you, if Eden were not true, if Eden is not historical, Jesus is not, not needed. If Jesus is uh, not historical, is not a historical person, then there was no cross, there was no atonement, and there is no salvation by grace through faith. Please remember, all these things are interlinked. And if Jesus was not a historical person, there was no Pentecost. And if there was no Pentecost, there is no church. And if there is no church, naturally all what we claim is false. It's just a lot of human imagination. And if Acts is not true, if the history found in Acts is not true, as I said, there, there was no Paul. And all these Pauline epistles, they are imaginary works of others, probably hundreds of years after first century. However, I want to assure you that Bible is a historical book and that history has been as much as is possible with the help of historical sciences, archaeological sciences, as much as, as is possible to demonstrate, every statement in the Bible has been demonstrated to be true. I said as much as is possible because historical sciences have their limitations. Archaeological sciences have their limitations. Within those limitations, everything that they could check so far has turned out to be true. As far as Lord Jesus Christ is concerned, there is plenty of evidence outside the Bible that he was a historical person. There is plenty of evidence related to the history that we find in Acts. In fact, no other ancient book written over such a long period has stood the test of science. When I say science, I don't mean physics or chemistry. I am talking about historical sciences, archaeological sciences. Physics and chemistry also play some role, but here we are talking about historical sciences. No other ancient book of such an antiquity has been tested so rigorously and so vigorously, both by friends of the book and also by the enemies of the book, and no other book has stood such a test. So in closing, let me remind you, there are two kinds of faiths in this world, history-based faiths, philosophy-based faiths. Philosophy-based faiths, they don't need history. Their historical component is not in, important for them. That's why they don't have a branch of their theology known as apologetics. Christian faith, on the other hand, is firmly based in history. Every piece of history that we find in the Old Testament and New Testament is completely intertwined with our claims, our theology. So if that history is wrong, our theology is wrong. If our theology is right, that history is right. Both of them need to be right. That's the reason why all these uh, rationalists and atheists attack the historical component. But again, that is the biggest strength of the Christian faith. 
because if the bible makes a historical claim we can use historical sciences to check the validity check the truth of those statements and i want to tell you my friends in the last two centuries historical sciences have made a lot of progress there have been a lot of breakthroughs a lot of discoveries and each and every discovery goes to support the bible as i said within their limitations they have only supported the bible today there is no established fact of historical sciences which goes against the bible and there is no statement of the bible which goes against any established historical fact we will have more to say about these things in the forthcoming lectures be tuned to these lectures and i am sure that by the time you are about midway in these lectures you would feel really confident to help others with the help of christian apologetics god bless you